Hey guys, Joe here. So in today's video, I want to be raw with you guys. I want to tell you about something that happened to me two years ago. It's very personal, very sensitive. So if I do lose track of my words, if I do get emotional, then I apologize. So the best place for me to start I think is that before this event happened, I was in a very dark and depressed state. I just quit my job where I was very unhappy and feeling like I was being mistreated and not protected, not looked after. Um, which was causing me a lot of emotional distress. So I decided to, to quit my job. Um, and I was receiving unemployment benefit and generally just in a very dark hole. And basically what happened is that I went out and got extremely drunk. I went to this event, this festival that was happening in Cambridge um, and I went alone as often I do in my life. I do a lot of things on my own. I went to go and find um, some friends, find some people that were also going to this event and I did end up finding some people and spending some time with them. Um, had some drinks was starting to sort of feel a little bit tipsy um, and yeah I was again I was feeling uh, depressed and very uh, emotionally fragile and vulnerable um, and I decided that it would be a good idea to go to this bar slash nightclub sort of thing that, that we have in Cambridge. It's a, a weather spoons, but it turns into a, a bit of a nightclub after a certain time. And I basically went on my own because none of my friends wanted to go. Um, and I thought, well, I'm not going to let you guys spoil my fun. So I'm going to go out and, um, and have fun. So I just carried on drinking pint after pint after pint, Jager bomb after Jager bomb after Jager bomb, um, to drink myself into oblivion. Um, and, you know, that was all coming, stemming from feeling very, very empty and numb inside. So I decided to, to do that and basically what happened is I ended up going home with this person who I didn't know, uh, was a complete random stranger. Um, and all I remember is being at their place, um, and them being on top of me. Um, and I thought that this person was female, um, cause they were dressed like a girl but they had uh, male geni genitals, they had a penis um, and I, in that moment I just froze, I didn't really have a clue what was going on, I was completely spaced out, as I said I was very very drunk um, and it's happened to me a lot in the past that I've got very, very drunk and I've sort of lost consciousness, like lost awareness. So I found myself in, the, in this position and, you know, whatever happened sexually happened, which I don't really remember too much of. Um, and as soon as that had happened, I, I left with my clothes, got dressed and basically went left without saying goodbye. Um, and I don't remember what this person looked like. I don't remember their name. I don't remember 
where they live, like street names, street name or street number or any of that sort of stuff. Um, so even if I did want to report it to the police, then I didn't have that information. And honestly, I didn't think about reporting it to the police because I believed it was it was my fault. I believed that it was my fault because I had got so recklessly drunk that I had not tried to stop this sexual encounter from happening. Um, and it made me question a lot about my my identity, my sexuality, who who I am as a person, and most importantly, who who I am as a man. If I'm not able to protect myself, then what does what does that make me? You know, like we are taught as men that we should be able to protect ourselves like we should be strong and in that moment I was completely weak and vulnerable and and submissive um and that left me feeling very ashamed for a long time and led me to go and see a counsellor for 12 weeks where I talked openly about what had happened to me and I talked about my past and my past trauma and um, past abuse that had happened to me in my childhood that I'm not going to go into in today's video but I thought it was really important for me to share this message with you guys not really a message but to share this experience because I know that a lot of men experience abuse experience assault and it's not talked about enough it's not discussed um and it can you know it's left me feeling like i am less of a man that i'm um not worthy of a relationship i'm not worthy of uh success i'm not worthy of lots of different things in my life because of these things that have happened to me that i ha haven't been able to stop or or been able to control and, and that goes back to the belief that i should be able to stop these things from happening um and it's taken me a while to accept that before being a man that I'm a human being that needs love and that needs compassion um, and that I need to be less hard on myself um, and not try to run away from these experiences that have happened um, not try to block them out or uh, try to pretend that they never happened or that they they don't impact me in a in a very deep and emotional way because they very clearly do so if you're hearing this message and you've experienced similar things then I really encourage you to share your story I really encourage you to go and see someone about what's happened to you, um, whether that is a therapist or a counsellor, um, but it's very important that you give yourself permission to share your, share your story, um, but I think most importantly it's about moving on from that experience and not allowing it to define you as a person and that's why it's important to not only to to share share what's happened to you because it takes away its power but also because it removes barriers it removes boundaries between you and the people that you share it with like I've shared this with with friends I've shared it with you know with family members and you know that 
burden was shared and allowed me to have more closeness, more intimacy with those people. Um, and it's about accepting and understanding that the that people care about you and they they don't mind if they if you are weak if you are vulnerable because um, they unconditionally love and accept you and I know that we are taught in today's society to be perfect perfect and that we should never be vulnerable or um show weakness but i think that we all know how we want to be treated and we all know that ultimately we want to be able to express these things we want to be open uh, we want to share because ultimately we do know how in, how important it is um in terms of feeling safe with other people and really when that feeling of safety with others is established it allows the connections relationships to to thrive to move to a different level where you start to just become someone who is much more open much more yourself and that's why it's it's so important to share these experiences that have deep, deeply affected you with other people. Um, and that's why I wanted to share these experiences with you. I run a men's community and oftentimes I speak to a lot of men um, and I have a lot of men on my Facebook. Many of these men are, uh, you know, are gay or have attraction for, uh, for me or for other men, and I get a lot of compliments and and stuff like that, and it it triggers me quite a lot because it brings me back to that experience that I had where I felt, honestly, I felt like I had been coerced. I felt like I had been used and, and manipulated, and that goes back to this feeling that whenever I'm really fully myself, I'm just, you know, enjoying people's company and I'm um, putting myself out there and I'm being vulnerable that I'm going to be exploited. Um, and so I think it's really important for for people to be very aware of the, the the consequences of their actions um, and for people to take ownership and responsibility for the way that they behave and the words that they put out and how how that can make other people feel uncomfortable because you never know what other people have experienced um, and it all com- comes back to the fact that we as a human beings society we sexualize everyone sexualize everything and when you have experienced trauma you've experienced abuse it's extremely emotionally triggering when someone is when people are consistently doing that to you and I experience that all the time and whilst I try to ignore it and I try to palm it off because I know it's not their fault that I've experienced that after a certain period of time, it does become extremely overwhelming um, and frustrating and and upsetting. So I really wanted to share this message with you guys, specifically the guys that I serve in my community, but also other men that are on Facebook, for you guys to know that I have had this experience and that I'd I'd really hope that you are more aware of the words that you use and the way that you behave towards other men in terms of making them feel uncomfortable because I'm I'm straight I'm attracted to women and I don't appreciate when um, when men come on to me um, you know without without me asking for it and I know that there's a huge thing about straight white men being um demonized a lot 
in today's society, but I can assure you that it's not just those men that are extremely sexual, sexually orientated. Men in general are very sexually orientated, but you know, women can be as well. So um, I just wanted to, to put that out there and I wanted to share that with you guys because I think it's a really important thing to discuss and something that affects a, a great number of people without often without people actually realizing no one's going to come out and tell you they've been abused or they've been traumatized and um, very few people are but that's why it's important for you to always keep in mind your the way that you speak to people and the way that you behave so thanks for watching this video um hope you found value comment like and share subscribe all of that um, and I'll see you all in the next one.